Today on the Daily Review, we discuss the remake of Nicholas's role, Nicholas's rogues, Roll dolls, witches. Today, we discuss the remake uh, uh, called Robert Zemeckis's Nicholas Rogues, Rawls, Dolls, The Witches. Today, on the Daily Review, with me, Joe LaRocca. That was a good one. Clean. They call me Mr. Clean. <laughs> I got confused. I tried to, was, I was obviously working on a, a shtick there that didn't really work out. Oh, let me move my chair so you can see Odie. Odie's corpse back there corpse um i just finished watching witches on the hbo channel a new robertson meckis movie uh based on the raw doll book uh and uh it's shit okay bye <laughs> no it is it really is it's shit it's shit um I was on board first, like twenty minutes. You know, I started watching. I go, okay, yeah, obviously, this is a kids' movie. I'm down. I I can watch a kids' movie, and because I, I I didn't get any backlash or anything, but like when you're watching something like Hubie Halloween, you go, oh, this is for kids. You gotta like take it with a grain of salt. But it can it can then even be bad even for kids. You know what I mean? This is you know very well made, sort of, with really good acting. Sort of. Um, and it's got a lot of polish, you know. But the first, uh, Chris Rock is the narrator, which is, like, refreshing. And uh, I love Chris Rock, and his voice is fucking great. And we, we start, you know, the beginning is about this boy who is uh, in the best shot in the movie. Uh, uh, the, he is rescued from a car crash. Uh, very uh, PG, don't worry, not graphic or anything in that sense um <clears throat> it's a really great shot where it looks like he's sitting in the car and the snow is going up but it's actually the car is upside down and he's still buckled in it's pretty damn good um it was probably yeah it was the most inspired shot of the movie um because it doesn't have special effects in it because that's going to be a big thing we get to here in a big problem in this movie in my opinion uh so he's orphaned he lives his goes and lives with his grandmother in alabama octavia spencer and uh, she's awesome. She's a treat, as always. She's a treat. And she it's fun. She's trying to get him out of his depression using music and food and gets him a little mouse pet, and it's just kind of adorable and all great kids' movie stuff happening. And he, the little actor boy, I should know his name. Uh, son of a biscuit. Oh, um, uh, Jazeer. Bruno, as Hero Boy is his name. Jazir Bruno is his name. Jazir Kadim Bruno. He's awesome. So he was the kid, uh, and he's great. And he's in a good portion of the movie until, I mean, I assume you know what happens. Uh, he becomes mousified uh, with, with several other children. Mm, spoilers, I guess. But that's really like kind of, I mean, I think you know that. You know, this is almost like Raw Doll stories are almost like folklore at this point. You know what I mean? You, you don't even have to read them. You know, oh, you know about the twits and you know about the BFG and stuff like that. They're kind of iconic. Uh, I won't I won't give anything else away because I guess that is kind of a spoiler. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, he's trying to, like, figure out uh, uh, how to um, um, deal with the tragedy that he's going through. And uh, Octavia Spencer is like, uh oh, we've been cursed by a witch. It was that witch you saw. We got to get out of here. And so they go to a hotel, um, <clears throat> the Grand something hotel or whatever. And uh, they meet Stanley Tucci, who's playing like the a, the slow version of uh, Ray Fine's Gustav M from Grand Budapest Hotel. But that's okay. He's got a few funny lines. Uh, and uh, there's a conference of witches, and they're very obviously witches, and they're all, they're led by, what's her name there, Anne Hathaway. And, good God, she is 
ripping the scenery up in kind of not a good way. I guess it's kind of funny. She does a Russian accent like this, but it goes all over the place. It's like the... F- it's like a fucking Russian roulette wheel is being spin. <laughs> Russian roulette, that's not what I meant. Uh, just a roulette wheel being spin, spun in her na- uh, her accent, like, vacillates between... And I think it's, like, intentional. It's supposed to be goofy and over the top and have that, uh, like, kind of mischievous, wry, dark sense of humor um, that Raul Dahl has. So uh, I'm not blaming it on Anne Hathaway, but it, it by the end of the movie... She looks so stupid. Not it's not her fault, but like the character looks so silly, and the special effects are really dumb that it makes the whole thing feel not good. You know what I mean? Like if your movie's amazing, you can get away with the most insane accent ever. You know, or a character looking ridiculous. Like think about No Country for Old Men, Anton Chigurh. How easily that haircut could have made you make like ruin that movie you know if, if if it wasn't if every other element wasn't really good and then and then his haircut actually ends up adding to it you know like if you'd show me a drawing like oh i read that script and then you showed me a picture i'd be like what are you guys doing don't don't shave his head like a penis <laughs> that's gonna make it weird um and i'd be wrong and that's why i'm here in my bedroom and the cohen brothers are dancing on a pile of well-deserved money um i hope they're making something what are they working on Anyway, okay, back to this. Uh, so we learn that the grandma is kind of like a voodoo healer, uh, and that the witches that witches are bad. The opening, see, that's that's what the problem is. There's a really like great opening where where uh, Chris Rock is explaining basically witches are real, they're around, and they hate children, and that's great. That's great, like children movie rules and you just set them up from the beginning so we get it but then like at the 20 minute mark once we like know that there are witches in the hotel and we kind of got the whole plot they like keep explaining about witches and it's like uh we got it something that's not we get that they're bad you're kind of like beating a dead horse either don't do it in the beginning but they have to because you got to catch your audience in the first nanosecond now before they go off on a fucking tiktok tear so I get it. I get it. I understand. I, have to, I mean, even in tel- like really, really intelligently made movies like Chicago, Trial of Chicago 6, like 7, I mean, uh, like opens with almost like a PowerPoint presentation to like trap you in. Like real, just here's all the information. I promise you the story is going to be great. It's going to be awesome. But like just get get on board. Get on board. Here's this. Here's this. Here's all these movies, uh, music cues and changes. And then after five minutes of that, once they know they've hooked you in, they can go, ah, now we're in a a courtroom for two hours, you know, but that works, you know, so, um, uh, yeah, they get turned into mice, the kids get turned into mice, and they find out the plan that the witches are gonna go back to all their communities and poison all children, and turn all children into mice, and, uh, they must stop them, uh, and some stuff happens, but really not much happens, they don't do very much, they just, like, try and get not turned into mice and then they have their plan on what they're gonna do and then they do it and nothing thwarts them like nothing like they they have an obstacle and they have to overcome it and they come up with an idea and then they just do it like nothing then gets in the way of their obstacle they just completely succeed so it's it's strange it's not scary at all I, even as a kid's movie, because I remember the Nicholas Rogue one just being terrifying looking and bizarre. This has, is very childish in most ways, uh, especially in the performances, like the way the script is and how uh, like simplified they are. Um, um, but then the witch's mouths kind of, yee, they go up more, and it actually... The the CG looks really not great, and it's weird, but it definitely would have creeped me out when I was a kid. Um, I, I wonder if it would be the same, as creepy as the Nicholas Rogue one was for kids. Probably not, because it doesn't feel real. Because the CGI in this actually looks like it's from 10 years ago, at least. Like, I feel like the mice and babe were better. Like they, they, it's like the second that the thing looks like a mouse, the whole fucking movie. And then, then the second it turns into like, 
the, like once the kids also turn into mice, the mouse he has is now like, <laughs> like you know, they can like do all this non mouse stuff. And you're like, what the fuck? Uh, so I don't know. It bothered me. I just because I, like one of the like. W- it's almost like they didn't do bother doing a, as great a special effects as they could because they knew kids wouldn't worry about it. I'm sure it's not that. I'm sure everybody tried their hardest and they ran out of time or money or whatever. But the big a big scene where lots of people are turning into rats and they're like exploding like popcorn that looks really good. But I noticed like lots of little things about like poor shadow integration on on the characters. See, I'm not getting to I'm talking about shadow integration in a children's movie. I guess I shouldn't be doing that, but. uh whatever whatever the ultimate thing is that like it it's there's it, i think it'd be an int- if it were a little bit tighter i think it'd be a good kids movie but um it really like the sense of adventure isn't that good it's a lot of just kind of watching it and they they make plans and like i said that their plans don't get like thwarted and now they have to do a different thing it's not you know Luke Skywalker doesn't turn his computer off and go, I'm going to do it with my fucking jet, I think. It's just like, oh, hey, we should try this. Okay. Okay. It worked. Sweet. Can we go home for lunch now? Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, I wouldn't bother watching it. I, I'm going to go back and watch a Nicholas Rogue one, maybe before Halloween. We'll see. Maybe I'll do it this week. It would obviously make sense. But I thought it'd be nice if I went, if I did The Witch and then The Witches. And, you know, trying to ride that algorithm like Donald Jr., right? Um, I think the setup is really great. I do think, actually, all the performances are fine. Or if they're weird, it's not those performers' faults. Like, I'm not taking, I'm not taking Anne Hathaway down a notch or anything. You know, but she's like, I wish I had. Let me just find some Anne Hathaway dialogue. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Marketing. Hmm. Filming. Hmm. Principal photography. Hmm. None of that's interesting. Um. Okay. Talks to uh, Adapt that started in 2008 when Guillermo del Toro ex- expressed interest in making a stop-motion animation film. Uh, that's the much better version. Oh, I want the Guillermo del Toro version. Nonetheless, the adaptation was described by Zemeckis as being closer to the original novel than the 1990 adaptation directed by Nicholas Rogue. Um, okay, cool. Uh, they also switched the protagonist in this movie as an African American boy, where instead he was a Norwegian British boy, like in the original novel. Hmm. Um. That's probably because they wanted to get Octavia Spencer, because she's like a big get, you know. Um, but your grandma could be black and you could be white, I guess. But probably not from Norway, British Norway, if that's a thing. Anyway, I found it almost unbearably bleep boring okay i'm gonna go now uh yeah it sucks
they use the word lollygag a lot in the movie. And I find it ironic that the movie itself often lollygags. It's also my favorite type of porn. <laughs>